Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and let's talk a little bit more about Artemis 1. The mission that, when I'm making this video, is still in progress, and the actual probe is still currently around the moon. But in this particular video, I actually wanted to focus on some of the things that might have not been discussed as much, specifically the issues that the mission has already experienced. Mostly because not everything so far has gone as planned. And despite incredible pictures and footage we've already received from the mission, and all of the incredible data it's already provided, specifically focusing on testing various instruments and various devices, there have been a few issues reported already, and some have not been resolved yet. And so, here's what we have so far. As you might already know, the main purpose of Artemis 1 is to test everything from the rocket to the Orion spacecraft to the actual orbit that we're going to be using in all of the upcoming missions later on, with the total mission length being approximately 25 days. It's supposed to return back to planet Earth on December 11th. And even though the initial few days were actually normal, nothing major happened here, as you might already know, the mission also included 10 separate satellites, such as this one right here, the satellites we usually refer to as CubeSats, although these ones were some of the larger ones. They're not really part of the Artemis mission, they were basically hitching a ride, but they were also going to test quite a lot of technologies, and potentially revolutionary technologies, with all 10 separate missions being super exciting. We've discussed these missions in the previous video, you can find in the description, but in a nutshell we had several missions testing various intriguing propulsion technologies, we had a few missions studying the lunar surface, and at least one mission that was even going to land on the moon using an intriguing profile. But looks like within hours of being launched from the Orion spacecraft, many of them started to experience problems. For example, the mission I was really looking forward to, the CubeSat known as Omotenashi that you see right here, by the Japanese Aerospace Exploration Agency, was actually going to try to land on the moon by using as little propulsion as possible and by essentially demonstrating a new proof of concept in terms of simple landing capacity by using much smaller satellites or smaller missions that could then be used by everyone. Unfortunately, as soon as Omotenashi left uh, the Orion probe, for some reason it started tumbling around way too much and its solar panels could not be pointed directly at the sun with its antenna pointed at the wrong direction as well, which meant that the Japanese agency could not control it very well, eventually deciding to abandon the mission completely because the battery was draining way too fast. Now this was supposed to be a super exciting project, so I'm actually really sad it's not going to happen now, but there's maybe still a chance. In March of 2023, the probe is actually going to be orbiting around the sun in such a way that its panels are going to be facing the sun again, and so there's maybe a chance that some of the power might be restored. Which means that the scientists here might actually use the probe for some other reason in the future. Something similar has actually happened to Japan before with its Venus mission and they managed to retrieve everything afterwards and even made it function for many years to come. And because this mission is also able to measure radiation levels in space, the scientists can then adapt this mission to basically become a radiation measurement from areas we've never visited. So that's the first failure. Then we have another one. This was probably the most exciting mission of them all. A citizen scientist project, known as Team Miles, was trying to test a completely new type of propulsion in space by using a very innovative plasma engine. A type of an engine that nobody has ever used before, a type of an engine that could potentially redefine space exploration. But now I guess we'll probably never know, because it turns out, as soon as the probe left, it didn't send any commands and would not respond at all. There was no radio communication with the satellite, and so the mission is very likely completely lost. But what exactly happened here? Well, one of the initial speculations is actually in regards to that hurricane that happened right before the launch and that actually postponed the mission itself by several days. Because of that delay, some of the batteries in these satellites did not get a chance to be recharged before the official launch. And so it's quite possible that they might have just run out of battery, with at least this one satellite not being able to respond to any commands or any communication. But we actually will probably never know. Another super exciting mission I discussed in the previous video was this one right here. This is NASA's own mission known as NEO Scout. And NEO Scout probe was supposed to test incredible technology as well. It was supposed to test deployable solar sails that it would then use to travel to a nearby asteroid. Yet this probe was also silent, not responding, not communicating, and not sending any data back. And that's really sad because these three missions were super exciting. These literally were the three most important missions when it comes to testing new technology. The other ones are obviously also important, but just maybe not as exciting. Okay, so three down. 
What about the rest? What about the other seven? Well, we have this other spacecraft known as Lunar, or Lun IR, whose main purpose is to essentially measure the lunar surface, scanning it using various frequencies, such as infrared light, mostly to map the surface of the Moon even better, and to provide more data for future missions, including crewed landings. And the mission seems to be functioning, but there is some kind of an anomaly that's causing the communication with the probe to be much weaker than it should be. The company behind this particular probe, Terran Orbital, is not entirely sure what's going on yet, but at least it seems to be kind of working. For down. Ok, but what about the other six? Well, the other six are actually doing pretty good. We have a satellite known as CUSP, CubeSat to study solar particles, and so as the name implies, it's going to be studying solar winds, solar events, and the effects they have on planet Earth, specifically focusing on powerful solar events that can actually damage satellites. This one seems to be functioning perfectly so far. Then we have Luna H map, designed to map the distribution of hydrogen on the surface of the Moon, thus looking for things like water ice, and specifically looking for this in the darker regions such as various lunar craters, potentially discovering deposits of water we never knew existed. And for this particular satellite, everything was actually working fine, until it was supposed to use its engine to try to correct its orbit. And the engine didn't function. The scientists think it's because of some kind of a valve that got stuck in the propulsion system. Now they think it can still fix it and possibly return it back to normal, but at least for now, the propulsion doesn't seem to work well. They might still be able to recover the original mission profile, but at least for now, they'll probably have to improvise. Luckily, another satellite, Lunar Ice Cube, whose main purpose is also to look for ice water, and not just hydrogen, seems to be working just fine. This was officially confirmed by NASA's own Twitter account, with the mission proceeding as intended. Another satellite known as Equileos, whose main purpose is to observe Earth and specifically Earth's plasma sphere, the inner region of magnetosphere, is fully operational as well. What's intriguing about this particular satellite is that it's actually going to be using this very innovative water propulsion system in order to create just a little bit of thrust to correct its orbit. Or basically it's using a kind of a water engine. Then we have this really cool biological experiment inside a satellite known as BioSentinel. And here the mission is going to be using a type of yeast in order to understand how radiation in space breaks down DNA. They actually selected yeast specifically because it seems to repair its DNA very similar to how a DNA is repaired in humans. And so they selected two different types of yeast, where one is able to repair its DNA a little bit better, and will then grow them in space just outside of Earth's magnetosphere. Just to see how dangerous all of this is going to be for yeast, and if it's actually going to be able to grow here, or if it's going to struggle after all. And lastly we have Argo Moon, the satellite you see right here, that's essentially basically a flying camera. Its main purpose was to really just take pictures of the mission, which it's already done a few times, but to also test navigation software and provide demonstration for long distance optical communication with our planet. So maybe not as exciting a satellite as in the other ones, but it's definitely going to be providing some important data for future missions. But what about the Orion itself? Was everything fine here? Well, it sort of was, even though there were quite a lot of tests conducted already, except for one major problem that the scientists could not figure out just yet. For some reason, for approximately 47 minutes, there was an unexpected loss of data coming to and from the spacecraft. It actually happened when the scientists were trying to reconfigure some of the deep space communication network, so it might have not been even a problem with the Orion, it could have actually happened here on Earth. Either way though, there was a 47 minute window when the communication was basically impossible. At the moment it's unclear why. But so far everything else has been pretty much on schedule. The spacecraft has performed all of its tests successfully and has demonstrated that every single piece of technology created for this mission seems to function as it should be functioning. In the process also taking some incredible pictures. For example here is one from the most distant point in orbit, essentially taking us farther away than any of the previous lunar missions ever before, while at the same time taking these incredible images of what seems to be Earth rays from the dark shadow of the moon. This is actually one of the more incredible videos taken so far. Tiny tiny Earth and huge invisible dark moon in front of it. But the mission is almost over, the craft is now in its final parts of orbit and it's actually going to be firing its engines relatively soon in order to return back to Earth, with the return happening sometime around December 11th with the final test being the return capsule itself. And that's basically probably the most important part. Are the future astronauts going to survive the re-entry? With this being the final moment. 
And so after this happens, I'll probably be following this up with the final conclusion to this mission and pretty much summarizing everything we've learned so far. And though the mission itself is most likely going to succeed and teach us a lot about future lunar missions, specifically Artemis 2 and Artemis 3, it's still super sad that we're never going to know if these incredible technologies that were going to be tested on the CubeSats would have worked as well. And it actually really sucks that the three specific missions I was super excited about, all three failed. I mean, obviously the other seven are okay too, but these three were actually super exciting. Testing new propulsion, testing new landing technology, and testing this enormous solar sail that would have taken us to a different asteroid. I guess the important part is that, so far, everything on the craft itself seems to function as it's supposed to function. Which means that we're probably going to be returning to the moon in the next few years, and more excitingly, it also means that one day, maybe in about 10 years from now, we could be using very similar spacecraft and very similar profile to then go to Mars, because that's really what the mission is for. By mid-2030s, NASA really wants to land someone on the surface of Mars. And that is definitely going to kickstart a completely new era of space exploration. So hopefully it does happen at some point. But until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe subscribe. Maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.